side. My first question is really, what, how did you get your break in design? Did you, did you always know that you wanted to get into design or did you fall into it or how did it happen? Well, you? I think I was pretty much set on doing it from four years old. Really? I wanted to be a bookmaker, mm -hmm. which I thought meant designing books yep. at the time. Yeah, yep. I want to be a car designer, <laughs> so you never can tell where you're going to turn yeah, out. Exactly. So yeah, it was always kind of ingrained into me really. Um, and then throughout school, yeah. I was always getting told off for spending too long on the front cover. So you were a drawer then? Yes. Big drawer. Definitely, yeah. Then art school? Yeah, art school, studied um, technical illustration and learning how to draw 3D, oh, okay. 3D, uh, right. yeah. 3D from plans before yeah. Yeah. computers were around. So that was an interesting one. Yeah. And then sort of slowly... Well, late nights for that. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> okay. lovely. I just oh, was staring at a drawing board. It was, yeah, very cool. interesting. Uh, but very different to a computer thing. Yep. And then computers came along and I was sort of kind of half into them, half not. Mm. Um, but still always, always into the sort of drawing side of things. Yep. Yep. And then studied graphic design at art school in London. And then that was a lot of sort of wine labels and postage stamps yep. and stuff. Yep. But in parallel to that, I was doing a lot of record sleeves for my okay. brother and friends who were right. involved oh, right. in that. Okay. So I had sort of parallel education yep. in yep. the sort of underground music scene yep. in London, which yep. is good. And then I ended up getting a job at Designers Republic from doing record sleeves. So um, that's how you ended up Sheffield? Yes, yeah. So I moved up to Sheffield because of that and yeah. stayed and still are living there now. And, you know, you talk about uh, um, you wanting to draw and never forgetting about the mm. pencil and yeah, the absolutely. art of the pencil. Yeah. And is that really from, from your schooling or the, the fact that you believe in ideas first before you yeah, start thinking absolutely. about execution. I'd, I'd much prefer to spend all day drawing and getting my hands dirty than sat in front of a desk. So partly mm. it's to do with avoiding that feeling of having a desk job, yep. being a sla yep. slave yep. to a screen. Yep. And partly it's just, you know, it's just so much more fluid getting your ideas out on paper and just making a complete mess before you go and refine it. Yep. So I think it's, it's always going to be in me. So it's still old school. Yeah. Old, stu old school to start with. Absolutely, um, yeah. Another question I want to ask you, because part of what I like about my studio is the banter and the humour yes. that comes with designers. Yeah, yeah. They are very funny people to be around. They're yeah, cynical, yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, Moni, probably. But they, they, they are very funny people to be around. Yeah. How does it work with, you know, no central studio? Obviously, you're interacting with people mm. and you're seeing people, but do you miss the... Yeah, yeah, there's definitely... I, I do miss spending four and a half days talking about football and music and, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> you've been in my studio <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah it's I, there's certain downsides to it but the plus side is that um we all generally work from our home studios now so everybody gets their heads down and just no distractions so you get so much work done sort yeah. of nine to five yeah and then we okay. all go out and get drunk in the evening so yeah. you kind of get the best of both of us because you kind of leave and socialize and you can actually feel like you're not you haven't sort of, you know, yeah, no, that's true. So it's it's essentially day. like working at home in yeah. terms of the intensity and getting yeah. your head down, no yeah. distractions. And there's a different sort of self-discipline to it. But we do often have people in the studio as well now as well because nothing beats having that sort of standing yeah. over people's shoulders yeah. and everyone sharing things face to face. But I think when it comes to getting on with stuff, it's just really good for yeah. everyone to sort yeah. of shut themselves yeah. in a cave yeah. for a while. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, but we're all sort of semi-connected anyway with video chat and phone and things like that so it's not like we're no no i know it's not <laughs> like we're hermits <laughs> and is yeah. it is it true that you work from a shed from the bottom of the garden yeah or i guess you could is, call is, it yeah is, yeah, it's is, a, or is that yeah it's the it's a architectural firm that builds these um home offices and they're great they, you know they come on the back of a lorry and it gets assembled but um yeah essentially it's a shed brilliant and in a few years it'll have a train set in it <laughs> <laughs> so in the mornings cup of coffee yeah. down across the garden a bit of a commute yeah. past the squirrel <laughs> a squirrel or two whatever and um, yeah yeah and that's it it's great um so i was sitting there earlier today and it was really windy and you could just hear the yeah, trees butting, butting against it so it may may fall down so but yeah it's good it's that's much nicer it's a psychological separation between working on your dining room table. Yeah. And not yeah. You're work, physically yeah, going you, you kind of, to your workplace. Yeah, even if it's a 10 metre commute, it's still a, yep. still a barrier. True. Yeah. Um, another quick question I wanted to talk about was the Olympics. Yes. And the logo. Yeah. And, well, not so much about the logo actually, but what was it like working on such a high profile logo and knowing that it's going to be all over the BBC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. I think um, 
One thing that, when I first met with Wolf Hollins, one thing we spoke about when um, we first started and they showed me you know, what, what they'd come up with, everyone there was you know, expecting controversy because yep. in a way that's great. That's what they were trying to do. They weren't yep. trying to do a brushstroke logo because no. No. I think in the world view of Britain, you know, we are all innovative designers and we do take risks yep. and things. So I yep. think it was good that it did create that impression. And yep. I think they expected, especially the tabloids, to react like that. Yeah. Well, they were going to react like that on any. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Logo, Every logo has had yeah. protests against it, Sydney or Barcelona, right? and yeah. everyone loves them now. Yeah. But so that was interesting, and it was, you know, it's fantastic being involved in that and in being involved in doing something edgy and pushing it yeah. really forward. Yeah. But the bigger picture of the brand beyond the logo is amazing. You know, yeah. the way they've approached it and the way it's so flexible, and yeah. the way it's not just a fixed mark, yeah. it is yeah. it can absorb the yeah. different sponsors. So. You know, I loved all that. As and did you work on the, the event itself as well, the yeah, launch and yeah, all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it worked great. on the direction of the sort of the video walls that are around it and how the audio worked and just generally building the whole atmosphere around Brilliant. and beyond, mm. beyond the mark itself. Great but, mark. So, um, looking yeah. back, it was yeah. a great one to have done. Yeah. Be yeah. A big board, be in and around. Yeah, it's great, yeah. great. But the, the tabloid thing of it was just... It's like a sort of an experience you can only get if you're British, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially logos. We, we like oh, to talk yeah. about logos. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But very proud of what everyone's done. On it. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So three years in, I think it's three years in with Universal uh, about uh, everything. About four, four now. Four yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's gone very quickly. And it's flying. Is, is, yes. it, <laughs> is it how you expected it to be? or No, which is great. It's even because when I... I first started, I thought I'd be doing record sleeves and a few music videos and a bit of that, um, because that's what so I was doing didn't, before. you didn't, the master plan wasn't, no. sorry, but in the master plan wasn't actually, I will use lots of different people and have no... Yeah, that, that was part of the plan, because it was always the idea that I got asked to do um, some events for a TV channel, and I was thinking, yep. I'd love to do this in 3D, but I don't know how to do 3D, yep. so let's find some great 3D animators and get them on board. Yeah. So that was the first okay. thing. And then it sort of really just blossom from there really in the sense that you know finding more and more people that I'd love to work with they've already got jobs or they're already busy I don't really want the cash flow of hiring them all yeah, yeah. Um, so it just it just grew like that so now we're, we're always looking for new people and it just allows us to keep it quite fluid it means that we can change yeah, direction sure, sure. between each project yeah and you know. how many people have you got there now um, per, full time we've got me yeah. and a, a studio manager who now looks after all the, uh, yeah. the heavy stuff, good, as it were, good, which yeah, is great, them, which is fantastic. Yeah, and then a, a couple of people who are based near Sheffield who help with the web design and general sort of um, art direction and design. And then people all over the place. So I'd say in total, the roster of people work was probably about 45 people oh, now. Really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, work with them once or twice, sometimes it's pretty regular. And I guess you can be drawing on them you know, you can be going to bed at night and yeah. brief somebody, yeah. you know, in Singapore and waking up and seeing yeah. a 3D animation that was done eight yeah. hours away. I yeah, mean, it's great, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that. the time zone thing as well is great because, yeah, we're working with people on, in San Francisco and places and it's great, yeah, because you, you send them the brief in the yeah. evening yeah. and they wake up in the morning with a nice surprise, <laughs> usually. Perfect, <laughs> yeah. perfect. It's a 24-hour studio, yeah. yeah. 